Metal Walker has long been known as a Pokemon clone, but simply casting it aside for this reason would be a huge mistake, as it adds its own distinct take on the popular formula, which results in something truly special. The events take place in the future, on an island known as Rusted Land, where machines called core units have become the norm. The standout aspect of Metal Walker has to be the several systems that comprise the experience, one being the evolution system, that sees the player's metal core slowly evolving over time, depending on which cores you utilize. It's it's a rewarding aspect of the gameplay and can result in some insane setups that can level enemies in a flash. Speaking of battles, that's another detail that truly shines. It's turn-based like most RPGs, but lends a lot from the likes of snooker or pool. To win, you must aim your walker to a specific location to either hit an enemy, avoid one, or escape. Since the playing field is quite small, it can be quite unforgiving at first, but once everything clicks, it easily becomes one of the finest aspects of the experience. Although not the best RPG on the system, them by any means, Metal Walker still certainly deserves a look. Dragon Warrior 1 and 2 on the Game Boy Color essentially offers a remake of the first two adventures that appeared on the NES, and provides them both in one package. Also releasing on the Super Nintendo, the Game Boy Color version includes everything, albeit with downgraded visuals and audio, but still stands on its own as two of the finest RPGs available on the handheld. Being such old games, the stories presented are fairly simple, and revolve around overcoming a great evil that's threatening the livelihoods of the heroes. As you would expect, gameplay is where it's at, and in no way did the titles disappoint. The emphasis upon special powers, attacks, equipment, and strategy are prevalent throughout both adventures, and will test even the most proficient of RPG players. There's also a generous amount of side content which is included. It helps pad out each adventure, but it never feels unwanted or obtuse. Each moment has its place within the adventure and does nothing but help flesh out the already intoxicating world in which the journeys take place. If you're a fan of the series, this one is a no-brainer and would make a perfect addition to your library. If there was one word that could sum up survival kids, that word would have to be unique. It is completely different to most of the RPG experiences available on the system, and tasks the player with ultimately surviving and living day to day on a deserted island. At the beginning of the adventure, you have the option of choosing either a male or a female hero, and are plunged into a journey that although will not win any rewards for its story, it is bound to stay with you long after the credits have rolled. Essentially an action RPG, each battle takes place in real time, and lends a from the likes of Zelda. Weapons and helpful items can all be procured on the island and are essential to progressing through the adventure, as well as getting to grips with the merging mechanic, which can help the player craft even more effective items and weaponry that will aid their day-to-day -day survival on the island. In my opinion, everyone should at least try Survival Kids out, as the truly unique setup and gameplay resonated with me so much, and it is bound to satisfy others as well. Crystalis is an action RPG that is essentially a remake of an older title of the same name that was released for the NES in 1991. You play as a young man who has been frozen for several years and is awakened with one purpose, that being to defeat an evil wizard who is terrorizing the land. In order to do so, the player must travel the kingdom and locate four swords which have the power to finally turn the tide of the battle and bring an end to the wizard's schemes. Now gameplay is pretty straightforward and sees battles playing out in real time with a range of magic and special attacks allowing the player to tackle each encounter with confidence, as well as several items you'll find throughout the adventure that assist the player both in battle and outside when exploring the environment. It shares much in common with the likes of the early Zelda and Final Fantasy games, from the visuals to the basic minute-to-minute -minute gameplay. It all feels instantly familiar, and that is not a bad thing at all. Although nowhere near as good as the NES original, it is still a respectable experience, and well worth a go if you're looking for an RPG on the handheld. Imagination is primarily based on a card game of the same name. It sees players assuming the role of a child with the ability to wield powerful monsters known as dream creatures that grant him incredible powers and abilities. If you're a fan of the genre, you will feel instantly at home with the engaging turn-based battle system. It utilizes up to four dream creatures at once. Selecting which cards to take into battle with you is essential to emerging victorious and soon becomes one of the true highlights of the experience. There are a ton of dream creatures to capture throughout the adventure 
and half of the fun is tracking each one down and ultimately building an unstoppable team of allies. Now the narrative isn't too much to shout about, but it does serve the action well and propels the adventure forward at a welcome pace. But to be honest, the gameplay and sheer amount of options that are open to the player more than make up for the shortcomings in the story. Overall, Magination is a great game, and if you can find it, it is well worth a purchase. It will reward you with hours upon hours of playtime. Revelations The Demon Slayer sees the player taking up the role of a young man known as El. His goal of becoming a Gaia Master is essentially the main objective of the adventure and sees you going forth to ultimately gather as many monsters to your side and fulfill El's dream. Now the story isn't going to win any awards and honestly just feels like it's present to propel the gameplay and this is what Revelations gets so right. As mentioned, El has the power to talk and understand the various monsters, plants and people that litter the land, so growing your team and building a respectable force is key in order to overcome the various hardships that block the way forward. As you would expect, each monster has its own distinct abilities and uses within battle, but it's not always about fighting. Conversing with your enemies is also key and could result in them joining your party and contributing to your overall effectiveness within the world. Now, Revelations truly feels like a mature take on the Pokemon formula and is bound to resonate with fans of that series as well. So if this one passed you by back in the day, it well and truly deserves a spot in your collection as well. Lufia The Legend Returns is an RPG that continues a series that began its life on the Super Nintendo. As the player, you assume the role of a young man known as Wayne. After an evil force reigns terror upon his village, you set out on an adventure that spans the entirety of the kingdom and sees the player exploring the world in order to bring an end to the evil consuming it. As with most RPGs, players can expect to acquire a whole host of abilities and equipment that will aid them along the way, as well as special skills known as IPs, which can be found throughout the world world and dungeons, which make combat all the more manageable thanks to the varying benefits that they offer. When it comes to encountering enemies, your character's positions play a huge role in the proceedings. Each are placed in rows, which determines how much damage they will take as well as how much they will deal out. This aspect manages to add an extra layer of strategy to each battle and makes every encounter all the more trickier. While there are some minor issues with the overall experience that might turn some players off, Lufia still offers one of the finest RPG adventures on on the handheld system and is well worth adding to your collection. Dragon Warrior Monsters 2 cast the player as Kobe, a young boy whose family travel to the distant land of Great Lock to run a monster farm at the request of the king. As you would expect, it's not long until events take a turn for the worse and the fate of the land hangs in the balance. As Kobe, it's your task to set things right, which gets the adventure in motion. Gameplay-wise, it shares a lot in common with the likes of Pokemon and sees the player capturing and nurturing a team of monsters that aid in the turn-based battle system. A generous amount of strategy is lent to each encounter and puts the various abilities and powers of each monster on full show. There's a ton of diversity and possible options open to the player that makes this one of the most rewarding battle systems on the handheld. Overall, Dragon Warrior Monsters 2 is a solid release and will likely keep you busy for weeks on end, with a surprising amount of additional content which is thrown in after the main objective has been completed. If you've never played it, buy it. You won't regret it. Pokemon Crystal was the final mainline entry in the series to appear on the Game Boy Color, before moving the franchise to the Game Boy Advance with Ruby and Sapphire. It essentially offers the same experience as Pokemon Gold and Silver, albeit with slight differences and extra content, and is once again set in the Johto region, with the adventure tasking the player with becoming a Pokemon Master by locating and defeating the several gyms scattered throughout the environment. In true Pokemon fashion, there are a ton of cute little critters to catch and train, as well as several side activities, such as breeding and a new inclusion known as the Battle Tower, which allows players to truly get stuck into the battling system and learn the more intricate aspects of it. Crystal also introduced many notable additions and changes to the Gold and Silver formula that helped set it apart from the previous adventures, one being the inclusion to finally being able to choose the gender of your character, which at the time was a huge deal. Pokemon Crystal represents the culmination of the series on the Game Boy systems, so if you're looking to get into an adventure of your own, this would be the perfect place to start.
Dragon Warrior 3 is essentially a remake of the NES classic that was released almost a decade prior. It manages to retain nearly every aspect of the experience that made the original iteration so memorable and repackages it for the portable console. With many notable changes, upgrades and new content, this really is the definitive version of the adventure. In all honesty, the narrative is nothing to write home about, but what the game gets right is the incredible gameplay. Each character is entirely customizable due to the deep yet simple class system, with every battle extensively tying into this aspect of the experience. Encounters play out in a turn-based fashion and grant the player a wide array of both magical abilities and attacks that can all be upgraded throughout the course of the adventure. On top of the main objective, there are a ton of minigames and side quests that are sure to keep players busy for quite some time. So if you've never got around to sampling Dragon Warrior 3 on the Game Boy Color, now would be the perfect time to pick it up and try it out for yourself. Thank you.